Okay. Well, hi, Karen, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. So the reason I reached out to you is because I've heard several of your podcasts, as well as the first one I heard was an interview you did with TC, uh, is it Fry? Kale. Hale. Hale, Mm -hmm. That's right. About hormones. And I just thought it was so fascinating because I've been in this world for 20 plus years of health and well-being and hormone balancing. And like I'm in menopause or past menopause now or whatever you want to call it. And I just found all the stuff you had to say so enlightening. And I think a lot of women could really benefit from hearing what you have to share about hormones and like what the doctors don't know Mm -hmm. and what we need to know. Yes. So I guess let's first start with like your background and why you got into coaching people on hormones. Yeah. Well, mine started early. I mean, I think I feel like I've had hormone problems since I was in my teens. Like I've always been very susceptible to crazy hormone stuff. You know, I had endometriosis and ovarian cysts. And I remember going on the birth control pill at a young age and it made me like gained 20 pounds in a year. Like I, you know, I was so sick from it. I would actually vomit from being on birth control pill. So I was always, the hormones were never really my friend. (laughs) Yeah. And then after the birth of my first child, I, you know, I'm, I was 31 when she was born, you know, gained a bunch of weight during pregnancy, but then lost it with, you know, within the first year, stopped breastfeeding. And then I slowly started gaining weight and having all of these health problems that just kept compiling. It seemed like it all happened within this like six month time span where suddenly I was packing on weight for no reason at all. I was having really severe PMS with severe menstrual migraines. I suddenly developed severe insomnia where I couldn't sleep all night long. I was super bloated and uncomfortable. It looked like I was always three months pregnant in my stomach and I wasn't eating poorly, you know, according, according to, you know, the masses, I guess you could say, like I was eating a healthy diet. Right. It wasn't healthy Air for quotes. me looking yeah. back, but it was what everybody was telling me to do at that time. Right. And, you know, the, my do- I would go to my doctor and she put me on an antidepressant and, she, you know, I was trying every other diet, you know, that came out. I was working out harder than I'd ever worked out. So I was going to this boot camp. you know, I hired a personal trainer. I was probably in, you know, the best shape of my life. And I just kept getting fatter Mm -hmm. and I got to the heaviest I'd ever been besides being pregnant. And I was like, what is happening to my body? You know, I'm 33 years old you know, nobody at that time would have said it's your hormones, right? but I knew there was some sort of underlying hormone problem because so much of it was around my period, you know, the menstrual migraines and the, the mood that was the, you know, the mood stuff that was happening. And I was like, I think it's my hormones. And so I found a naturopathic doctor and said, can you test my hormones? Cause my doctor wouldn't have. And sure enough, I had a whole slew of hormone problems. I had too much estrogen. I had too little progesterone. I had really flat lined on my cortisol. My DHEA was super low. Later on, I found out that I also had like no thyroid. So I was hypothyroid. I had all of these, like a hormone storm happening yeah. because of the birth of my child. It was like the trigger was the last straw. I'm sure, like I said, I had a, a lifetime of hormone stuff, but that was just like, it just did me over basically. And so I spent the next few years really focusing on reversing all of these problems. So, you know, I had to quit working out. I started doing yoga all the time. I started to, you know, take stuff to balance my hormones out and address the stress and all of these things. And it wasn't a quick process. It wasn't like, oh yeah, I fixed my hormones. And a month later I dropped the weight. It took a while to fix these problems and get to the root of it. And then, you know, I, I did, and I lost all the weight and I maintained it. Then I started to go through perimenopause at a very early age. And so I had to kind of go through it all over again in a different way. And through that time span, I decided there's more women like me. There's got to be where they're doing everything right. They're eating well, they're exercising, and yet they can't lose weight. And they've got these strange underlying health problems that no doctor is able to 
seem to be able to fix basically, or they're going through perimenopause and are just being told to suck it up and get it's through normal. it. Yeah. As you'll, is. You'll get through it. It's just aging. Yeah. It's just aging. Here's yeah. your antidepressant. Here's your sleeping pill, which is the, what is most, you know, here's your statins because your mm-hmm. cholesterol is going up and some women develop type two diabetes and all of these. So they're masking with all this medication when it's a hormone deficiency problem, right. not, not a getting medication to the root. deficiency. Yeah. 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 So there's so much to unpack there. So I guess the first thing I want to ask is, like you said, you were on birth control before, you know, you got pregnant with your first child. What, besides being on birth control for years, what do you think? Because I mean, I was a woman in my 20s, I think even as a teen too, that had those kind of cramps that were debilitating that I would have to take. I I always joke, I took a half a bottle of Motrin and I would just get in bed and pass out for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And I hear this story over and over again. And I'm meeting women younger and younger these days that are really experiencing these hormonal imbalances. And back when I was that age, no one even talked about hormones. Like, I'm like, what? So like besides the birth control, which I know is huge and women should not do birth control. Like what other things do you think are happening on the planet that are causing these imbalances? It's, and it's, you're right. It's getting way worse really quickly. So we're seeing an epidemic of women with weight loss resistance and hormone dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And then now we're seeing these young girls that are menstruating sometimes at the age of nine years old now. Yeah they're developing breasts really early, mm-hmm. you know, they're, we're, we're, PCOS places to go various syndrome is on the rise. It's the number one cause of infertility in women. So infertility is rising, like all of these hormone things. And the, there's a number of things that are happening on our planet that's causing this. But the number one thing I believe is the endocrine disruptors in our environment. So we're all being ex- constantly exposed to toxins in the environment and in our food that mimic hormones. And it doesn't matter if you're eating organic and you've got this like super you know clean green house, mm-hmm. you, you, there's no avoiding these, what they're called, you know, a lot of them are xenoestrogens. So they're, they're what looks like estrogen in our body and the body will actually take the xenoestrogens and use them over our estrogens that we're producing. And we don't want that. So we're getting this chemical estrogen acting like estrogen in our body, but it is not good for us. And this is what we're, why we're seeing so many of these problems. Stress is huge, especially as we age as a perimenopausal and menopausal woman, people think, Oh, you know, stress. We you know, we hear all these practitioners saying that we got to do self-care and we got to manage our stress levels and meditate. And, and it's like, do you think that your great grandmother was having to self care and sit and meditate every day <laughs> in order to be healthy? Right. And there was no yeah. obesity rates back then. No. There was no, there's very little hormone right. issues back then. Like and definitely someone hard. would go through it, but they yeah. worked hard. They, they were they, like all day. So there was stress, but it was a different kind of stress. Yeah. They had like six children. They were running the household. They had no help from their husbands. They were, yeah. com- men were completely useless. Well, I'm just kidding. They weren't completely useless, but a They're woman did. Things. She worked hard. Like she yeah. was working the garden and the children yeah. and the household. And, and she wasn't having to meditate and do self-care that, that just wasn't even heard of back then. Yeah. So Nowadays, what people don't realize when I say stressors, I'm talking about like the artificial lighting, the toxins Mm -hmm. that are in our environment, um, the foods that we're eating that are laden with GMOs, you know, that also act as endocrine disruptors inside our body, the pollution in the air, the EMF waves, the underlying infections that we all have. We all have heavy metals in us. There's so many people with mold toxicity, Lyme disease. Like Mm -hmm. there's, we have so much stuff coming at us. And so it's not just that you're maybe stressed out and doing too much in your life. It's that it's compiling with all of these other things. Yeah. 
right? So as the older woman, I think that that's what is influencing us, you know, with the environmental toxins, the food toxins, all of this together as a stressor and endocrine disruptors. And then at a young age, these, these girls, they're not eating properly. They're eating, um, you know, a carb rich diet. Most Mm -hmm. kids are nowadays too. We're seeing type two juvenile type two diabetes, which was unheard of until this last century, basically. And it is massively on the rise. So we have kids that are type two, developing type two diabetes because of their diet and what they're being fed because it's easy and convenient for parents. And, you know, I don't judge. I I get suckered into that stuff too sometimes, but (laughs) but these are, it's it's just this, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just this perfect storm that is, that has to stop because girls are suffering immensely from it. And so are women that are going through perimenopause and menopause. So I'm guessing a lot of it, like when you're mentioning these nine-year-old girls is the dairy and the meats with all the hormones, the, the CAFO operations where they're confined animals being fed hormones and antibiotics. And like, that's the last thing we should be feeding our children. Yeah. And it's the granola bars and the, you know, the, 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 cereal for breakfast. I mean, try and find one cereal out there that a kid's going to eat that isn't laden with sugar and processed grain, basically. GMO corn, yeah. GMO corn, Mm -hmm. corn syrup. Like it's, it's not what we're, and then they go to school and they've got their granola bar and they've got, you know, their Rice Krispie square and they've got their cookies and they've got, you know, and it's just like, sugar after sugar. And then they're coming home and having chicken strips and fries for dinner. And so the nutrient deficiency and the processed foods is just, it's wreaking havoc on both boys and girls. Boys, we're seeing it differently. They're, you know, we're seeing erectile dysfunction on the rise. They're becoming very estrogen dominant men where Mm -hmm. they're starting. So it's the opposite of PCOS for women. So women with PCOS become more androgenic. So they get more of the masculine hormones and it's driven by sugar and poor diet. And then on the man side, they're becoming more feminized and their estrogen goes up. And that's when you start seeing the man boobs and erectile dysfunction and weight gain. And that is driven also by sugar. So it's the opposite in both sexes. Yeah. So what do we do? I mean, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, that's a little bit of a doomsday. Yeah. I know. I'm like, okay, now we know what's causing it. And I know there's a lot more as far as this heavy metals in the airs and everything, but like, where's a good place to start with like, let's just say for women that are might be listening to this probably twenties and beyond or moms, you know, Mm -hmm. with their kids. Yeah. I think diet has to be the foundation. 100%. You have to, for every age, diet is the foundation. And I'm not going to sit there and tell women like, oh, eat nothing but salad all day long and organic meat, because that's just not realistic and it's not going to happen. But the more real food that you can eat, that's where you start is just simply not eating out of the box, out of the prepackaged stuff. If you can somehow get so that you're actually eating real food at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that is one of the best places that you can start is just getting rid of a lot of that quick fix stuff. I think that that is massive, especially for the young kids, I think is huge. So switching, you know, lowering the grain intake, upping the good meat, upping the good vegetables, nuts and seeds, fruit, you know, I say go for it on the fruit. Some people are like, yeah, fruit's too much sugar, but in all the research, it actually shows that you, most people don't will actually lose weight when they eat fruit, not game. Right. And it's real food. Yeah, yeah. Instead of the bar, they're having the apple. Yes. yes. Apple with almond butter or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then also like what I really am into is getting people back in their kitchens to create food on their own. So even for kids being yeah. able to have them get involved with making organic rice krispies with the ingredients you choose or the making your own granola at home and yeah. not deciding like toasted coconut versus like oats. And, and so yeah, there is a way, like if someone's listening going, how do I do that? There are great, like both you and I have great recipes on like what you can make that kids will love and they'll yeah. eat. Yes. And it just, it's a matter of, not giving yourself the choice of the fast food 
and not necessarily mm-hmm. like restaurant fast food, but just fast, quick food that you can prepare in a matter of five minutes over putting a little bit more time into some real food. We tend to always choose the fast route because we are busy. We're, most of us are holding down a job and we've got kids and we're running them around and the husband's working. And so there's not a lot of help in the house. And so you're getting home at five, six o'clock at night. You don't really want to cook at that hour. Mm-hmm. So there's, you have to, put time aside and make it a priority, make it something that's top of your list. You're not giving yourself the option of the quick fix dinners and and meals, right? Right. Like my son every morning has to have some form of real protein. So we make our own Turkey sausages and we've got, and, but you can find those in a grocery store too, that like nice, clean sausages. Um, We'll sometimes get them from Costco and they're super, you know, they're, they've got no antibiotics, no nothing hormones in it. It's clean. You can just throw them into a pan or he'll have eggs, you know, with a piece of like gluten-free toast. So I try to not have so much gluten in their diet. It's not a hundred percent, but I do what I can where I can. And, you know, maybe once a week we do that fit, that quick fix dinner, like where we'll do pizza or chicken fingers or something like that, where it is quick. So we do that once a week. So that, you know, you can have that feel normal, right? Yeah. Just to feel normal and just to give yourself that break. So you kind of have a balance of, okay, I'm going to cook on these nights. And then we're going to have this one night, maybe of going out for dinner and another night of quick fix. Yeah. And And I also think. I tell people too that, you know, like, of course you're exhausted because you're eating all the wrong foods or you're, I don't want to say you're eating all the wrong foods, but if you're eating a lot of even carbs, let's say you get home at five and you're just exhausted. But once you switch up, like follow your program or, you know, do something where you're eliminating a lot of these things after a week or two, you suddenly have energy come home at five and like, wow, I feel like cooking. I'm in the mood to make something healthy. And I think it's just like committing to that first, maybe two weeks to a month of pushing through and then you realize oh my gosh I made all this keto bread and it's in the freezer and god thanks past me for all that work you did for me (laughs) yeah and asking your kids for help and your husband's for help like it amazes me how many women do all the cooking still Mm. like 90 percent of women that I talk to Mm -hmm. are still doing all of the cooking in their house and they're working just as much as their husbands are And that is pathetic. Like I tell women, you get that, you tell him he is responsible. Even if you give him one night out of the week, he might be the worst cook in the world, but you can tell him it's up to you to put something healthy on the table. You can go out and buy it, (laughs) you know, have someone else do it for you, or you can barbecue, whatever, but you are in charge of some of this cooking. And I think that that helps, right? It helps take the load off of us. So Yeah. And I think as women too, just remembering that we are worthy to ask for help. Like some people are afraid to ask for help and I've been there and it's like, no, I deserve to ask for help. I deserve this help. So like, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we tend to value our worth on how much we can do in a day. (laughs) Yeah. Men don't do that. (laughs) So yeah, it's like letting go of that and being asking for the help from your kids and from your partner and and so that you make it work or, and if that is, isn't doable, then you put money aside to hire somebody to do it for you. Yeah, or you have exactly. these meals delivered to your house, which there's like a bazillion to choose from now, or you go to nature, like one of your health food stores, like Whole Foods or some sort of other natural health food store, and you get there to go deli stuff, you know, so it's healthy and it's, you get a big salad from them. Right. I was just at my sister's the other day and her, she doesn't cook and her husband doesn't like cooking. He'll cook, but he doesn't like it, but she can't, she doesn't know how she's the worst cook in the world. <laughs> So they put their money into food. They'll go to the health food store and they get like probably a hundred dollars worth of just salads for the week that are already prepared. And so that it's just easy for them. And then all they do is cook up some meat and throw it on their salad and it's done. So there's so many ways around that, but yes. So food has to come first. And then depending on where you are in your life cycle. So if you're a fertile woman in your twenties, or if you're in perimenopause, or if you're in menopause, there's other things that you can then build upon that diet with, right? So there's certain, like you can detoxify your house. There's so many things that you can do just in your environment that helps Mm -hmm. to unload some of these toxins, you know, like making sure that there's no artificial sense in the house. That's a good place to start. Now people are like, 
because they're like, well, what do I change out? What, what am I, what am I using that is this estrogen mimicker, these xenoestrogens? And a good way to, 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 to figure that out is anything that is artificially scented is going to have those endocrine disruptors yes. in it. And colors. And colors. Like yes. you look in someone's shower and, and there's this red soap. I mean, a lot of teenagers use like Axe. Or, <laughs> yeah. So this is when I see a lot, like I'll go to a client's house and they've been eating organic and they're on the path of like eating a healthy diet, but then they're still using Dawn liquid, yeah. bright blue. And I'm like, I'm not like, you can smell it in the dish. Like even after they've rinsed it, like you're right. getting those chemicals. And then under the sink, like the spray, like make your own with white vinegar and water. Like you just kind of got to start thinking about everything you're putting on your body is basically you're eating it. Yeah. The amount of chemicals, I, I wish I could remember what the number was, but women, especially the amount of chemicals that we put on our body on a daily basis, mm -hmm. like from our face cream, body cream, shampoo, makeup, the list goes on and on and on. Even your, mm -hmm. if your laundry detergent has perfume in it, your dryer sheets have perfume in it. Yeah. Uh, like you said, all of the chemicals that you're using to clean your house with, and you can, if you don't want to use vinegar, go find something. You can go to your local grocery store and find a green house cleaner that's not yeah. got any smell to it or any of the toxic stuff in it. So mm -hmm. it's so accessible and it's affordable. And it's just, it's an easy thing that we can do to control the environment that we're in, at least in our house, right? Exactly. So there's, and there's, you know, you can get expensive things, like you can start doing air filters and trying to get into all of those things and eat nothing but organic and grass fed, but you know, you do what you can. Start somewhere. Yeah. Start somewhere. Get rid just of the colors and the scents. The chemicals. It's a yeah. good start. <laughs> colors and scents. That's yeah. a great, great start. Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, so let's say someone's done all that and they're still dealing with hormonal problems. I know that's one thing that really drew me to you is, you know, you're saying you, people are going to their, either their doctor or even their naturopath and they're getting wrong information about what's really going on in their body. So I'd love just to hear more about like the hormones and what women are experiencing in them too. Yeah. To a degree. Yep. It's, it's really sad how little information there is about hormones for women, like hormone balancing stuff. So if you're in your fertile years, there's so many natural things that you can do to bring your body back into balance again. So if you're somebody that's experiencing horrible PMS with depression and anxiety, and maybe you're gaining weight, uh, you know, because you just had a child like I did or something like that, something's amiss or you're infertile, you know, you're not fertile, you can't get pregnant, you got PCOS. There's so many things that you can do when you're in that, those fertile times to revive your own hormones and to help them out. So first and foremost, I always say, test, don't guess. Even mm -hmm. when you're young, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's so important that if you are listening to this and you're going, I think I have hormone problems, then go and test the hormones because at that age, there can be so many different things happening that are affecting your weight and affecting your mood and your life that, you know, the protocols for each one is very different. So we commonly see, you know, high estrogen, low progesterone, cortisol, either is too high or too low or dysregulated. Um, testosterone can be really high for younger women that are experiencing the PCOS. So test and then you can work out what supplements very few women at that age in their in their 20s and early 30s they don't need the hormones the, to, re, to some do but most of them do not need to replace hormones okay. they need to take things that are going to revive their own hormone levels or you know bring down the cortisol, you know, or bring it up, you know, get rid of that testosterone. There's all of these things that you can do with supplements, diet, and lifestyle wow. that will revive them. And then as we start to go into perimenopause, which usually starts to happen out over the age of 35, most women don't know that they think perimenopause, they are thinking like fifties. Yeah. I'll or late forties. Yeah. Period right? stops. That's what they think perimenopause is. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're seeing it younger and younger now. And so we're seeing these women at like how I was at 33, I was already like, had no, I had the progesterone of a 50 year old. So which was really low, obviously. which was really low. Yeah. 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 So, but what we start to see first when most common is the progesterone dropping. 
And so when you're in your late thirties, early forties, there's still a lot of those natural things that you can take and do that's going to help your own production of hormones. You may need to supplement with a little bit of bioidentical hormones, but a lot of the time, especially if you're in your thirties, there's still lots that you can do naturally that just help to pick that up. Like things like even lowering that stress, the stressors in your life can help boost progesterone up, can help boost your thyroid up, can help lower the high cortisol so that you can lose weight. So there's all of these like lifestyle things that you can do that's going to help the production of those hormones. And then as you start getting into perimenopause farther, so that's typically in your 40s, um, typically mid 40s, to 50, we start to really see a decline in that progesterone in majority of women. There's very few women that I test their hormone levels and their progesterone's okay, (laughs) especially in relation to where their estrogen is. So estrogen progesterone work together. They're like yin and yang. They need each other. So there's a lot of talk right now in the health sphere about estrogen dominance. Yeah, I actually have a blog post on estrogen dominance. And it's the number one blog that gets the most traction on my entire website. And I've got hundreds of them blog posts. It's the number one. So estrogen dominance is something that's talked about a lot and is unfortunately really misunderstood. So estrogen has been demonized when the bad estrogen is the ones we were talking about earlier, the xenoestrogens and women can become very xenoestrogen dominant or their progesterone is low. Like mine was in comparison to estrogen, but that doesn't mean that the estrogen was too high, but women will see that or they'll go to a functional medicine practitioner and their medicine practitioner will be like, Oh, you're estrogen dominant. You need to start detoxing like crazy. This estrogen is, is too high when it actually it's in really healthy levels. It's just in comparison to that progesterone. So it's the progesterone that needs to come up. Yeah. And this gets really, like I said, it can get so confusing. It gets yeah. confusing and there's a lot of misinformation about it. Yes. Right. And people think when they think of estrogen, they think breast cancer. So they're like, no, no estrogen. We don't want any estrogen in our body. When estrogen to to me, out of all the study that I've done with hormones is the most important hormone for women. But what it does in our body is like nothing else out there. Like it has got, it has up to 800 different functions in our body. That's massive. We've got estrogen estrogen receptors in every organ of our body. It's the only hormone that has that. Wow. It is not just about fertility. It is about brain function, a bone function, metabolism, like insulin um, sensitivity. There's so, it gives you energy. Like you think about how you feel And you can tell me that like, Elena, how do you feel? How did you feel when you were a cycling woman? Did you feel more energetic, more sexual, more just get up and go feeling in the first half of your cycle or the second half? You know, it's hard to remember. I wasn't paying attention (laughs) back then, (laughs) but I mean, I'm guessing when I was ovulating was probably when I was feeling the most sexy. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And guess what? That's when your estrogen is at its highest. Yeah. And so estrogen makes you feel great. It's the second half of our cycle. The closer we get to the period, the more Mm. grumpy we get, the more irritated, the more anxiety, insomnia, depression happens. And that's because estrogen's on the decline, progesterone starts to take to, to rule the roost. And it makes there's positives about progesterone. But, and then they both drop. And when you don't have either of them is when you feel your worst in the cycle, yeah. but estrogen's a fabulous hormone that is oftentimes detoxed like crazy. And it's about detoxing the xenoestrogens, making sure that your liver's healthy, getting rid of those toxic chemicals in your environment mm-hmm. and boosting progesterone in order to match that it's it's i have done probably over a thousand hormone tests i think there's been like i can count on one hand how many women 
truly had estrogen dominance where they had literally way too much estrogen okay and i and i had to detox it so really that doesn't happen as often as we were thinking it's no, happening it's okay. not yeah so there's still the things that you would take for high estrogen is still good to take because they will help you get rid of the xenoestrogens yeah but you don't want to try to drive your estrogen down is not the answer because you're going to feel worse so it's about trying to find that perfect balance between the estrogen and the progesterone when we're in that perimenopausal state. And so, like I said, what tends to happen is that progesterone plummets. It usually goes down by about 75% in perimenopause from the age of 35 to 45. It's taking a plummet. Estrogen will fluctuate. Mm -hmm. It'll just kind of do this and you'll get, you might get, you, you hear often women talking about getting really heavy periods during this time. Yep. And that's because there's little, little progesterone and enough estrogen. So you're the estrogens building that uterine lining, but there's not enough progesterone to help balance that out. And so you get heavy bleeding because you yeah. have a lot of uterine lining build up and you'll see women, they'll go into their doctors. And this is when the hysterectomy is, you know, request, you know, to say, well, you should just get a hysterectomy or they'll tell you to get an ablation. So they'll basically laser out the inside of your uterine lining. So you stop bleeding when, if that woman was just given a little bit of bioidentical <laughs> progesterone, yeah. which is exactly like her, her own, which is extremely safe. She wouldn't have to have that happen and it would balance those things out. Now, when, then as we age, that estrogen will start to drop and that's when you'll start to miss your period or have irregular periods. And then that's in your FSH or your follicular stimulating hormone will also go up while these ones are going down. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know, okay, now we've got too little estrogen and too little progesterone. And then in some women, about half of women, they'll also lose their testosterone, which okay. is a very key hormone for women as well that often overlooked. So these three hormones are plummeting for many women during their 40s. And at this point, there's no diet, there's no supplements that are going to bring those levels back to where they were when you were a fertile woman. Okay. And this, I really like to drive home because most practitioners, especially male ones, unfortunately, doctors, at that point, they're... <laughs> That's when the, here's your antidepressant. Here's yeah. like what we were talking about before. They medicate rather than saying, why don't we replace the hormones so that you can transition through to menopause in a much easier way. So, and this looks different for every single woman, but there's just, you know, there's functional medicine practitioners that will say, and I don't want to like diss people, but I just hear this a lot. Lately, yeah. I actually heard a very well-known doctor talking about this the other day, and she's like a hormone doctor saying, you know, to try and do, you know, that you need to go this kind of natural route to transition into menopause and kind of where she was poo-pooing bioidentical hormones. And this is a person that's not, she has never gone through perimenopause yet. Okay. Right. Yeah. And there's no amount of supplements that are going to bring those levels back. Okay. So if you're suffering and you are having a lot of symptoms of perimenopause, so you're gaining weight, you're aging quickly. So what starts to happen, you'll start to get a lot more fine lines on your face. Your breasts might start sagging. Your vagina can start drying up. So there's no lubrication and sex can get very painful. Some women I've talked to actually have a complete atrophy of their vagina where it's actually closed down. Wow. It's terrible. It's, it's very, very hard on their relationship. Yeah. Um, if you're getting an increase out of nowhere, like depression, an increase of anxiety, insomnia, low libido, um, weight gain in the belly, all of these things are signs that your ovaries are no longer producing these things. And the only way to transition through smoothly is to replace them. I wish there was another answer, but there isn't. The only yeah. other answer is to take multiple medications for each symptom. 
So bioidentical hormones are hormones that are exactly the same as our, what our own body produces. And so some people just need a little bit. They just might need a little bit of progesterone, a little bit of estrogen, gets rid of all of their hot flashes and helps with their libido and all of these things can go away. Other women, they need a lot more. Mm -hmm. Some need to do what's called physiological restoration of hormones, which is basically giving a woman the same amount that she would have had as a fertile woman. And so there's all of these different ways that you can take these hormones and there, there's lots and lots and lots of research done on them and they're safe and they're not going to cause all these you know, you're not going to get breast cancer yeah. by, <laughs> by taking estrogen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, if you had estrogen positive breast cancer cells, estrogen is a growth hormone. So it will go there and make it grow. So that's a bad thing for sure. And so if you've got a history of breast cancer in your family, you want to work with a practitioner that's knowledgeable about this and so that you can safely use these hormones. So there is that caveat, but in most cases, the old estrogens that we were using, which were came from pregnant horses and they were taken orally, they did have a lot of risk factors. So did fake progestin, progesterone, which is called progestin. Okay. Both of those have a long list of horrible side effects, you know, increased risk of heart attack and stroke, uterine cancer, the list goes on and on, weight gain, et cetera. So that is where people get really confused. And so they think that they're lumping all of these hormones into this one category yeah. of being toxic and bad for you. That's not true. The bioidentical hormones, like I said, they're exactly like our own. You take them in a proper way so that they're safe. You make mm -hmm. sure that you're eating well, that you're exercising. Like those things still have to be part of that because if you're going to be slapping on hormones, you want to make sure that your gut bacteria can take it, that your liver can take it, that you right. can, you're still a healthy person. It's still all of those things apply that we were talking about before and for the fertile woman, they still apply for the woman that's in menopause and perimenopause. Yeah. You still have to have those healthy foundations for healthy hormones, whether or not those hormones are coming from inside your body or outside your body in order to have them balance and work properly. You still need the foundational stuff underneath, which is the stress management, the food, you know, the proper detoxification that's in your environment right. and all of those and exercise yeah, to help circulate yeah. the hormones. All of these things have to be part of it to be, uh, to be optimized right. hormonally. Okay. So let's say someone's like, oh, I really need to figure out what, what's going on with me. Cause I'm having night sweats and hot flashes and all, so a lot of things you mentioned. So like, let's just say, for example, if they are working with you, the first thing you do is have them get tested, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of, I know there's a lot, I like, I use Everly well, but I know there's a lot. I think you have on your site, you have a few places that people can go to get tested. Yes, I do. And yeah. you can do it from home, which is great. It's just a yeah. saliva, I think mine was a saliva test. Yeah. 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 So you can do saliva testing from home down in the States. You guys have all the ability to order all your own lab work and do it in the comforts of your own home with yeah. blood um, like did you fill up these little vials full of blood of your, like with a finger prick, uh -huh. which is very easy to do. I've done them. It's not painful. Uh, and you just send it in and you get your results back. So before I meet with somebody, I do have them test. So whatever their affordability is. So maybe a person can only afford to go to their MD and get serum blood work done then that's where they go. And then for other people, if they want to be more exact, especially for a fertile woman, you want to maybe do saliva because it's more accurate. So, or you can do urine with, with certain people to test your metabolites. If you're worried about things like breast cancer and stuff, you can actually go and see what your metabolic, what your estrogen pathways are doing. Right. So there's different options for testing, but it is so important to get tested because yeah. Hormones work synergistically together, which means they all relate to one another inside the body. So if one goes down, it's going to affect other ones and vice versa. If one goes too high, it's going to affect the other ones. So you want to see get the big picture. Okay. What's happening? What's going on with your insulin? What's going on with your cortisol, your thyroid, your estrogen, progesterone, free testosterone, like Let's take a big look. What's going, what's, what's your follicular stimulating hormone? Are you in going into perimenopause? How far in are you? And mm -hmm. so we take a look at all of these things and then you can say, okay, 
this person's, you know, got nothing left. Her FSH is sky high. Then you know, okay, this person's a great candidate for bioidentical hormone therapy. Or, okay, no, this person's FSH is normal, but they've got no progesterone and they've got plenty of estrogen. So we need to bump the progesterone up um, with supplementation, lifestyle, and maybe a little bit of bioidentical progesterone for a period of time while we get her own body's production back in order. So it's so important to look at it from this very big holistic viewpoint. Look at all the factors. All the factors and get them tested. And so you're not guessing what's happening. Okay. So then like, just say someone is working with you and then they send you that, then you, are you, do you have to, this is something because I don't have health insurance and I'm self-employed. I work for myself. Uh, do you have to get that prescribed if you need hormone replacement or is that something that's available over the counter? So in the United States, luckily you guys have everything over the counter down there, except for testosterone, thyroid, and cort- cortisol, cortex. Okay. Is what uh-huh. it's called. So those three have to be prescribed by a doctor. Uh, same with if you want higher doses of estrogen. The uh-huh. highest dose that I've been able to find in the United States that's over the counter is one milligram of estradiol. So a lot of women need much more than that when they get into menopause. Okay. So what I usually have women do is if they can get it over the counter great. Then I can give them where I source my, my creams from. I sell a lot in my wellness shop, or I give them, you know, a list of what I would like to see them on and for them to take that to their regular medical doctor, their family doctor, because most family doctors just don't, they're not educated in it. Yeah. So it's not their fault. The medical school doesn't right. teach them about bioidentical hormone therapy. So if you go in most cases and say, you know, I'm working with a hormone specialist, this is what she's recommended. Most of them are going to go, okay, sure. Like right. <laughs> sometimes so I get resistance, but, okay. but most of the time, because they actually don't, they're not educated in it. They'll say, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That, that sounds reasonable, right? It's not, <laughs> you're not asking for something too crazy here. Yeah. And really, if you're going in and saying, you know what, I'd, I would rather not take an anti-anxiety medication. Instead, I just want to take a little bit of progesterone to help with my anxiety. Really, if they say no to that, you need to get another doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so there are most doctors I found, I've been doing this for seven years. I would say about 80% of them are on board with the recommendations because they can, you can take in your hormone labs and be like, this is the thing. If you went to your doctor and you went and you're in perimenopause or menopause and you go and get your hormones tested and your estrogen and progesterone come back really low and your follicular stimulating hormones really high, they will say to you, everything looks good. Elena, don't worry about it. Everything's great because they're going, well, yeah, she's 50 something years old her, of course, her FSH is going to be high. She's got the, the hormone levels of a 50 year old woman, right. which is right in their eyes. Yeah. But if you're suffering, then, then you're going to want to ask for some hormones. And so most of them will say, Oh, okay. Yeah. You can try that. You know, let's give it a, let's, let's do a trial run of yeah. these hormones. And they usually get on board with it. So <laughs> or they're going to say, here's your birth control pill, even though you're in menopause, that happens often, which is just horrible. Or like we said before, that you're, you're going to just get slapped with the medication. Okay. Yeah. So I guess you got to be as educated as possible, which is why I love what you're doing, because you're really teaching women how to figure it out on their own. And your whole program just offers everything is so about balancing the hormones. Yeah. Because women, it shocks me how women just think they're going to get through this. They got to just suffer through it. Well, perimenopause symptoms can be over 10 years of okay. experiencing that. You can start when you're 35 and go all the way to when you're 50. Hot flashes and night sweats and anxiety and depression, all these horrible things where women 
because some women become suicidal, they, their, their marriages end, all of these really tragic things can happen because they don't have their hormones. Some women sail through and they never have experienced any of what I'm talking about. I've met those women. <laughs> yeah. It always shocks me. They'll be like, like, Oh, I, no, I think I had a hot flash once. And I'm like, Oh, you are so lucky if you only can recall one hot flash. Yeah. <laughs> or I've yeah. gained a few pounds. I'm like, Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, this is such great information. One more thing, uh, you, met, you mentioned cortisol earlier. So what would someone be looking for if like maybe if their cortisol is too high? Like what are some of the symptoms of that? Yeah. Is it cortisol, usually high cortisol that we're experiencing or do we get low, low cortisol as well? Yeah, I see a mix of both. What I, I see often is a lot of dysregulation just throughout the day. So people will maybe have like low cortisol in the morning when it should be high in the morning and then high at nighttime. So they're not sleeping. So it mm -hmm. might be just that it's dysregulated. Cortisol is one of the ones that you need to test that one you cannot guess and you can't go to your doctor to properly test for it because they're going to do a snapshot in time. So you go in the morning, you're going to get a morning reading. If you were, if you're nervous about getting needles and your cortisol goes up and they take your serum, <laughs> It's going to look like you have really high levels. So what you want to do is do a four point saliva cortisol test. And you can do that just by itself. And that it's going to tell you what your cortisol is doing throughout the day, which is really key. And so if it's flatlined throughout the day, then we can say, okay, you're in adrenal insufficiency. There's some reason why your cortisol is really low. So it could be that you've got an infection. It could be that you're highly stressed out, your job, your kids, whatever it is. But there's things that you can do to help bring that back up. And then if there's too high cortisol, then it's a whole different protocol and different supplements that it's going to help you to bring that back down. And so you might need to take certain things in one half of the day or during one reading, right? So if you've got, like I said, if it's backwards and you've got too low in the morning and too high at night, you're going to take stuff to lower it at night and bring it up in the morning. It. So it's okay. very different. It's something that you really don't want to mess with yeah. because it's completely, even though there's adaptogens, I still find that an adaptogen is something that is very popular for adrenal health. And it, they say that yeah. these herbs will either whatever your body needs, if your body needs to bring down the cortisol, it'll help bring it down. If it needs to go up, it'll help go bring it up. But in my experience, I find that certain ones are better for certain things. So there's certain adaptogens that you're going to take that are really meant for high cortisol. Okay. And you don't want to take it if you've got low yeah, cortisol, low. because I think it can drive, I've seen it drive it farther into the ground. Okay. So that's why you're saying it's so important to test. Cause like, yeah. let me just say two examples or two yeah. that I have on my countertop, holy basil and ashwagandha. Yeah. And yeah. I really honestly don't know which one to take when, because I don't yeah. even know if my cortisol is balanced or not. I mean, I did my hormone testing and my estrogen and um, progesterone were balanced, but it was saying that P2 thing where the progesterone's a little bit lower than the estrogen, even though they were Right. right in the middle, both of them. Yeah. But yeah, then the I'm ratio like, well, I, I don't, and I don't know anything about the cortisol. So obviously I need to work. I need to go on your side and do more testing, but, um, I just, sometimes I'm, I'm guilty of that. Like, I'm just going to start taking things and see what right. happens. And I'm like, I really don't know if I should be taking either or both or what. Yeah. And I've seen in so many adrenal products, ingredients that have things that will raise cortisol and things that will lower it. And I'm in like the same product in yeah. the same product yeah. all the time. So yeah. holy basil is one of the ones that you would take for high cortisol. So okay. you would take it at nighttime to help you sleep Got it. Um, and bring your cortisol down. If you had really high cortisol throughout the day, you could take it throughout the day too, because it's going to help bring it down. Ashwagandha is truly one of the ones that is very adaptogenic. One of the few that I will use for both high and low. Okay. And it's very nourishing to the thyroid. So that one, cause some people find they actually get energy from it and they need to take it in the day. Other people will take it at bedtime because it helps them to sleep. Interesting. Yeah. Very it's kind of like magnesium that way. Some people are like, Oh, it makes me sleep. I'm like, it gives me energy. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. 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 And so Holy basil, phosphatidylserine is another one that I'll use for high cortisol. Phosphatidylserine will block cortisol production. Um, uh, Relora will also bring it down. Relora 
and jujube. Oh, wow. Will also be our lowering ones. Yeah. And then licorice root is one of the best ones to help raise cortisol because it helps okay. for the cortisol's half-life to extend inside your body. So it'll help the cortisol to, to remain inside the system before flushing it out. So licorice root, ashwagandha is just balancing. Um, there's not a lot to raise cortisol that I found. Maca, maca yeah. is adaptogenic, I like but I definitely feel like it's more of an energy. Yeah. Um, Funny Same story about sings. maca. Maca, I got, because I was into like raw food for a really long time and I did 100% raw vegan diet for a while. Yeah. And the, when maca came along, I'm like, tastes like malted milk. So I was putting it in all my chocolate milkshakes. <laughs> And my, my testosterone must've gone up because I was horny all the time. Like I would look at men I, I would normally never look yeah. at and go, Ooh, nice buns, you know? And I'm just yeah. like laughing at myself. And then it started to produce night sweats because mm. I was just, you know, so we have to, I always tell people now, like we have to be careful with maca. Like I was doing probably tablespoons where you should be doing like a half a teaspoon. Right. So I learned the hard <laughs> way with maca. Like it's not, don't mess with it. It's like, it's, it's a real, it's potent. It really is. And I've heard that from so many women that it is one of the best for libido, that yeah. it really can raise libido, but it will, it tends to go down the testosterone DHEA pathways, which are androgenic. Yeah. 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 Okay, good to know. So I guess the bottom line is get tested, go to your website. So what's your website for everybody? Just to... karenmartel.com. Super easy. Okay. Yeah. And um, I even yeah, have like a I, quiz on there too. That's a, just a good starting point. Yes, I did take that quiz. Yeah. Yes. So it'll that's tell awesome. you kind of what out of the six top hormonal imbalances that you could have. I mean, it's not a replacement for an actual test. It's just a great starting point. Yeah. And I'll give you all the different eBooks on each of those hormone imbalances so that you can educate yourself on it and say, okay, I think I might have a couple of these. And then you can start to apply different things like supplements and food and stuff like that to see if that, how it feels inside your body. Or you can then look at it and be like, you know what? I see that I obviously have something going, some stuff going on here. Now I'm going to pay and have the actual test done. Right. Okay. That's just such great information. And I know like I just signed up for your program. I wanted to see what you were doing on there. And it's all about eating to balance your hormones. And I know there's a lot more coming because I'm just in the first week, but I just want to thank you so much for everything you're doing to help women because a lot of us are stabbing in the dark about like what to do with yeah. our health. <laughs> and even if we're healthy, like which I consider myself very healthy, I'm like, I know there's more I have to learn. So I guess that's what I would say to people is like, start exploring hormones and start educating yourself. Yeah, what absolutely. would you say is one thing like a woman listening today, like if they wanted just to start something today, like what's the what would be a good way to just get started? I think probably going back to what, what we first talked about, which is cleaning up your environment. If you haven't done that yet, I think that that is one of the best places to start, which is eat real food and clean up your environment. Okay. Yeah. Great. Exactly. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on with me today. I oh, really love everything you're sharing and uh, go to karenmartel.com and take your free hormone quiz. Yes. All right. Thank you so okay. much, Elena. Have a great day. Thanks. <laughs>